Hello, everyone. My name is Glenn Guyton, your cultural competency navigator, diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace keynote speaker and workplace trainer. Thank you for joining me today. Well, I want to share a little information with you. I do do training for a number of corporations, organizations, nonprofit, for profit, schools. I work with a lot of organizations who are seeking uh, to improve their diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. And I do believe that my training is effective if people uh, do some of the things that I suggest and if the organization is committed to, to the pro process. Hey, before I get too far along, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. But I want to share with you an article that I came across. And that article says, Why Ineffective? Diversity training won't go away. I don't know why ineffective diversity training won't go away. I wish it would go away. I wish people who did diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace training who are ineffective will get out of the way and provide more opportunities for myself and colleagues that I know who do good work, who do great work, and who actually bring about uh, significant change in organizations. But we're going to deal with this article here and really look at some of the questions that it brings up. And then I want to tell you why I think that, in some sense, this article uh, is correct. That there are many times when uh, institutions, corporations, organizations uh, try to implement diversity, equity, and inclusion training, training, and it fails. It fails uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, I think that this article gets some things right. I think it gets some things wrong. wrong but let's look at it uh, just for a second. It says... Research has shown been uh, research has long shown that corporate training on diversity and sensitivity don't work. Uh, why are workers still required to take it job after job? Hey, look, there are a number number of trainings out there that I've seen that are ineffective. I've taken ineffective training uh, when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and it's training where it's just kind of like checkbox training. I've been asked to do uh, checkbox training. Uh, for organizations. Hey, uh, Glenn, can you come in and just train our employees on diversity and inclusion? I said, well, okay, yeah. Well, what are your goals? What would you like me to train you on? Well, we we, we don't we don't know. We just need diversity training. That is ineffective, right? If you bring in a trainer and you don't have any specific goals or objectives, if you don't share with that trainer what the culture is of your organization, what you're hoping to accomplish, you're just throwing spaghetti on the wall. You're hoping something sticks. And I'll tell you what, nothing is going to stick uh, because you have not tried, uh, you, you have not tied, I should say, you have not tied your diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, objectives into your overall strategy. You have not taken into account the culture of your institution or, or your organization. So you're starting off on the wrong foot already. You're already making a mistake. So part of the reason I think that diversity training has been ineffective in many organizations is that it just is just out there the, the organizations institutions the people that are tasked with uh setting up this training don't know what the heck they're doing they just throw a spaghetti on the wall and so there's no clear strategy and so you bring in a, a trainer someone like myself now i i may not even do your training but you bring in someone uh, who's just looking to to get a quick dollar a quick buck they're going to come in share some very basic principles with you, and people are going to leave and say, "Hey, I learned nothing. We didn't. We didn't accomplish anything." So I'm sure that there is substantial data out there that says this training doesn't work. But I also know that there's data out there that shows that it does. That it does work, and I think this article alludes to it uh, a little bit later. Later on, so uh, it, it talks about training has become a lucrative business, and, and, and it has. I mean, there are a number of consultants that make a lot of money doing doing this. But there are many consultants who really care, who really have gotten into this business to have an impact on uh, institutions, and they want to see significant change. So a recipe for failure. So it says there are several factors, uh, reasons why diversity training remains inconsequential in promoting inclusion. Um, and in the worst case scenarios, they can do more harm than good. I do, uh, I do agree with that. Uh, it's... It says first, it's extremely difficult to change personal and implicit bias. Uh, that's true. I, I think that is very hard. Uh, but there are there are opportunities to change organizational culture. There's opportunities to give people new skills, and there there are opportunities 
to create awareness. Now, if someone is, is, is a racist or homophobic, going to a one-day training, a four-hour training is not going to make them less homophobic, less racist, less, less sexist. No, it's not going to change that. If, if that's your goal uh, to do that, then you're, you're asking for the wrong thing. And also, things like that take, take, takes time. It's not going to, a one-off training or a webinar, one webinar, one keynote speech is not going to change the hearts and minds of people in the organization. So part of the problem is, is that we maybe expect too much out of a one-time thing or a four-hour training or an annual training. No, if, we're, if we are going to be successful at diversity, equity, inclusion, we need to incorporate this into our workplace structure, our workplace culture. It has to be an ongoing process, and we have to have some clearly defined things that we hope to accomplish. And it's, it's, it won't always be changing the hearts and minds of, of people, but we can... Uh, uh, help people to learn how to communicate uh, better. We can uh, make it easier to talk about race and other identity factors in the workplace. There are a number of things that we can do to make uh, this training more effective and to have a greater impact on your on your team. Um, another thing it says, uh, additionally, when employees feel like they're being controlled, um, they tend to react negative negatively. Yeah. Uh, if you go bash someone over the head with diversity training, hey, you're racist, you're sexist, you're you're homophobic, you're you're wrong. If that's how you start off your training, no one's going to listen. They're going to close off their mind and say, I'm just going to sit here through this four-hour training or these two four-hour training classes that I have to take. I'm going to answer these questions. Uh, but I'm mad now. I'm angry. I'm upset because I have been personally attacked. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. That is not the type of training that you probably need in your workplace. Uh, is there a time and place to to confront things that are uh, disruptive and destructive? Yeah, we want to address those behaviors. We, we, we do. Uh, those are some things that may need some one-on-one -on -one attention, some one-on-one -on -one corrective action. But overall, this training, the training that you have in relation to diversity, equity, and inclusion, in my opinion, really should focus on uh, creating some awareness for people uh, to to clearly define the organizational goals, the directions uh, that you want your teams to head in, and also to, to help them understand what the win is for them. Hey, why are we doing this? Why is it going to be helpful and beneficial for, for all of us? Instead of telling people how bad and evil they are in the, in, in the workplace, um, we need to let people know, hey, how this is going to benefit them. You know, what's wh how is it going to help the bottom line? How is it going to help us be a better company, better organization? How is it going to make my job easier? That is, that's so much easier to sell than telling people they're just evil. Hey, you're biased, you're racist, you're sexist, you're homophobic, and uh, we hate you. That's that's not going to be effective in, the, in training, and, I, I, and I, hopefully you're not saying that. But is there a time to confront those behaviors? Now, if people are being racist, if there are racist things being said in your organization, if there are sexist or homophobic things being said, hey, we don't want to tolerate that. We're not going to tolerate any bad or disruptive behavior. But correcting that behavior is different from the training that is needed to give people the skills to be aware of what is uh, inappropriate and the skills of how to uh, do things differently, you know, how to communicate these things differently, to become more aware of what, what is and isn't appropriate and why maybe times have changed. The things that were acceptable in this co company 10 years ago are not acceptable in this company now. How are you going to let people know what your cultural expectations are for the organization? And so if you don't do that, if you just go in uh, ex uh, talking about the negative aspects of diversity and inclusion and not uh, tying it to the bigger bigger vision of your organization, you're going to, you're going to have problems. And the training is going to be ineffective. Uh, I do think that it's helpful to have a mix uh, of training, different types of training, not just someone lecturing and, and talking uh, for uh, 50 minutes or whatever to people. Hey, I use a, a number of different things. I use humor. I use music. Uh, I get people working hands-on in this training. I use scenarios, real-world scenarios. I use stories from the employees in the organization. Those are ways that, that really help, I think, train to become more effective and really help it to hit home. Also, uh, you have to understand the limitations of, um, you know, your team. Uh, one of the things that I provide is the uh, IDI, the Intercultural Development Inventory, because you have to know where people are on the kind of on the spectrum of, of being able to hear and receive. 
Training should not and is not one size fit, fits all. Your trainer really has to know the audience. Your trainer really has to connect with people who are at different places on this spectrum of, of, of inclusion or cultural sensitivity. There are different levels. I'll put a, a link to the article, my article, which defines some of these things. But there are different levels as we think about cultural knowledge, cultural sensitivity, cultural awareness. There are different levels to this thing. And if we think everyone is at the same starting place and we can just teach them the same, we're, we're going to be wrong. It's just like a classroom. I was a classroom teacher uh, for a, a short period of time in, in my life. But, um, you know, I have a master's in education. And one of the things that I learned about is differentiated uh, education. Students, learners uh, connect with us at different points on this journey. We can't teach calculus to someone who who only has, you know, basic math math skills. You have to get them to that place. So the same thing with diversity, equity, inclusion training. I know everybody thinks they're an expert. They know everything there is to, to, about diversity and inclusion. But hey, I spent a lot of time researching this. I read a lot of materials. I read, uh, uh, you know, conflicting materials. Uh, you know, I compare and contrast, you know, theories uh, of this. I try to figure out what works for different demographic groups. It's not one size fits all. I don't even teach the full spectrum of diversity, equity, and inclusion. I, I really focus on uh, racial, gender, generational types of issues. There are some trainers who are better uh, dealing with LGBT inclusion, uh, dealing with uh, the inclusion of, of people with, with physical disabilities. Now, I can touch on all of those, those things, but I'm, I'm not the expert in each of those fields. I bring in other trainers from time to time to help me uh, especially depending on the demographics of the organizations that I'm, I'm working with. So, I mean, this article has some really good points, uh, but, 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 but also, you know, you have to look at these things holistically and, and take some of these things that are written in this article with a grain of salt. Uh, because again, I agree, there are many bad trainers out there. How do you get the training that you, you need? Uh, and, oh, I love this right here. It says, you kind of get what you pay for. Low cost, low payoff. And uh, we try to do things on a cheap. I just bought a new a new house and, uh, you know, I paid uh, a decent amount of money for some of the things that I, I uh, am having done. I brought in some experts. Uh, we were hanging some TVs on this mantle and I have some fairly expensive tile on my mantle. So I said, hey, Glenn, you know how to hang a TV, but are you going to risk breaking this tile or are you going to bring in an expert, someone that knows how to do it and pay them a little bit more to do it right? So I brought in somebody uh, to do it and uh, paid them a little bit more to get it right. And also, I didn't want my wife to be mad at me for breaking uh, the tile. Uh, so, you know, you get what you pay for from time to time. Uh, look over the resume of your, your trainers. Don't try to do this thing on a, on a cheap. Do it right. Uh, and make sure the trainer has a good sense of what's going on. Uh, I'll put the link again to this article. I'm not going to read it all here. You don't want me to read to you on this, this video. But I'll... Um, Put the link in that in here. You can check it out. You can have some meaningful meaningful change. I think you know. Look through this this uh, article. Figure out what your blind spots are. If you're thinking about embarking on changing uh, changing your training, you know what went right, what went wrong. Uh, did you bring in the right type of trainer? Did they ask the right questions? Uh, this article says, hey, the training isn't going anywhere. Hey, you're going to have to do it. Uh, people are expecting this type of training. It does help. It's not going anywhere because I believe that it that it does have an impact. Uh, this article says that it's not going anywhere, that it's, it's not impactful or is ineffective. But if it didn't make a difference, just from a PR standpoint, organizations wouldn't wouldn't be doing it. I don't want you to do it just for PR. I want you to do it to help uh, create a more inclusive environment. Uh, the article does talk about recruiting. That's part of diversity, equity, inclu inclusion. It's rec recruiting a diverse population. It's, it's recruiting, it's re retention, retention, it's educating, it's providing skills, it's helping people to communicate better in the workplace. These things will have lasting impacts on your team. Uh, you need to learn how to develop leaders who can communicate with a diverse population. And, and what does diversity mean? That's something that you'll have to define for your organization. So check out this article. Check out some of the resources that I'm going to uh, put in the description for you. But thank you so much for, for, for your time. Don't get, don't have ineffective training. Don't hire bad trainers. Uh, don't try to do this training on the, on the cheap. 
diversity, equity, and inclusion is for everyone. Uh, I know there are some groups that tend to be more resistance, resistant to this type of training. Um, and, you know, sometimes white males feel isolated. Don't feel like that. Feel like that. Hey, this training is for everyone. We want to create healthy work environments so that we can get our job done, that we can do what we need to do with, with greater harmony and less stress. But thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Again, my name is Glenn, Guide to Your Cultural Competency Navigator, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion in the Workplace Trainer and Keynote Speaker. Thank you so much for joining me today and have a great day.